The captain is a monster, one might say, in the literal sense of the word. The captain represents quite possibly the strongest pure strength build that you'll ever see in Elden Ring, and you can make it right at the start of the game. Embracing a pure strength brutality mentality and just being this body filled with sheer endurance, there is nothing that can stop the captain, really. But there is something off about the captain. The captain's signature weapons are rather unorthodox weapons with which he brutally defeats his opponents. There is just something unnatural about the captain's weapons that make them hit so hard in the first place. Before the captain was a well-renowned fighter, he was the captain of a famous fleet until an event known as The Incident happened. We don't talk about The Incident, but everybody that does dies within 24 hours, so don't ask about it please. Let's say however that it made sure that the captain hits his opponents with such force that health bars get melted with single swings of his weapons. This video will cover you for an entire playthrough, so early, mid and late game. This build is broken early on, but it's also broken late game. That tells you all you need to know about how good this build is. To make the captain the best choices for your starting class is either the hero or the vagabond. Both are great options and have the best stat distributions for this build. I went with the hero. It probably is better overall because we don't need the dexterity of the vagabond really. And the hero is the definition of pure strength. Pick the golden seed as your starting keepsake and let's get going. Now before you make the captain we want to get a horse and get a head start early on. Get a horse from Melina at the gate front side of Grace. Pick the flask of wonders physic in Limgrave and make sure you kill Grail with a golden pickled fowl food and the morning star in Kaelin. Make also sure to pick up both sides of the decks medallion. If you have never seen a video of mine and don't know what I just said or are new to Elden Ring I will put a link in the description for the just mentioned steps so you know everything you need to know to do those steps completely correctly within like 2 minutes. Killing Grail correctly will net you around 100,000 runes and get you to level 36. With those runes get these stats. I've tried out a bunch of stat distributions for level 36 but this one is the best. It's well rounded, makes you hit really hard and makes sure you fully meet the requirements of the weapons you want to use while having amazing sustain with vigor and endurance. After getting your stats up to par it is time to pick up our main weapon. For this you want to go to the Weeping Peninsula. It is pretty close to the starting area, just go south until you can go to the west pretty much. You ultimately want to arrive at the Morn Tunnel right here. When you get into the Morn Tunnel, go through it, basically you can ignore everything in it until you get to the boss. And if you choose the hero, you can just brute force this boss using the hero's starting weapon. See, the hero's starting weapon has wild strikes. It already gives you an indication of how powerful this Ash of War is. That is nice because this Ash of War is even better with our main weapon that we will pick up in a second, which is the Rusted Anchor, and the Skelly Misbegotten will drop it right for you after you kill him. How convenient. The Rusted Anchor is in its most unoptimized and unupgraded form already really good. You can just straight up destroy everything right from the get go with this weapon, and it feels really nice to swing this great axe while having a nice hard punch to it when you actually hit things with it. It's a really fun weapon. But we need Wild Strikes on it to make it complete. Thankfully you can get Wild Strikes in Limgrave as well. It's very easy to get near the Stormhill Shack side of Grace. Follow up the road till you see the Scarab and then kill the Scarab and you'll get Wild Strikes. Put Wild Strikes on your weapon and you're a monster now. Wild Strikes recently also got a buff by the way, making it even better than it already was. But we're definitely not done yet. Near the Wild Strikes Ash of War, there is the Strength Knot Crystal Tier. It's right around the corner, really. It's our first main Crystal Tier. It gives 10 levels to our Strength stat, so make sure to loot it, because we're going to use it for our entire playthrough. Put it in your flask. Okay, so let me tell you a story about Great Axes. Great Axes had a great year through the patches. They got buffs multiple times even, making a Great Axe-oriented playthrough now better than ever. When people think of pure strength builds, you usually see either Colossal Weapons or Colossal Swords. I made those videos as well. Check them out as well if you for example want to get OP early with the Guts Greatsword, which is also a really fun and powerful weapon by the way, or if you want to use big hammers to stampede everything. Definitely just check out my other strength videos as well if you like the idea of strength in general. Links will be in the description. However, great axes are great as well and have very nice attributes to them that makes them shine in their own right. 
The Rusted Anchor stands out in this weapon class in particular just for the reason that its damage type is of the pierce type. Somehow this weapon deals pierce damage, even though if you look at it it's a bit hard to imagine how that would work really. Usually the pierce damage type is associated with spears and logically pointy stabby things while most great axes have the standard damage type. But this is great news and will definitely take this anomaly. Because it means it has both the benefits of spears and great axes at the same time. See, this means that we can run the spear talisman with the rusted anchor and make its damage output catapult to insanity with this talisman, making this a very unique weapon that also looks badass. Now first we want to pick up this talisman as our first talisman, for this we need to go to Lyrnia of the Lakes, just bypass Stormville like this and make sure to travel to the west while staying in the watery area. The location for the talisman is actually very close to the border between Limgrave and Lyurnia and while moving a bit to the west you will find the entrance to the lakeside crystal cave right here. Enter the cave and just progress through it till you see a chest. In that chest will be the talisman. I will talk about this talisman in a second. But first we need to upgrade our rusted anchor so we have the ultimate start as the captain. If you're familiar with my videos you'll know exactly my method but essentially what you want to do is go to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel which is also in Lyurnia, it's right here. Drop down all the way to the bottom to kill the Crystallion. It is a bit of an annoying fight at the start but just spam attacks till you break his armor. After you break his armor just two hand the rusted anchor and use jump attacks to completely control the fight. You will absolutely destroy the crystalline that way and you'll get the bell bearing afterwards allowing you to buy smithing stone number one and two. After getting this bell bearing you want to go to the Alts Plateau region. You should have both sides of the deck medallion as I mentioned at the start of the video to enter this region. In the Alts Plateau region go to the seal tunnel, progress through the illusionary wall there and get to the chest to loot the second bell bearing. With this bell bearing you can buy smithing stone number three and number four getting you all the way to plus 12. Now you want to farm the miners here for smithing stone number fives. Kill, loot, reset the area until you have 12 smithing stone number fives. Then progress forwards and hit some more illusionary walls till you can drop down again. Here you will find a statue in the distance, lure the killing machine thingy towards it to destroy it and it will break open and give you 3 smithing stone number 6. With all those smithing stones, the one you can buy and the one you just farmed and picked up, you will upgrade your rusted anchor all the way till plus 60. So let's talk a bit more about the rusted anchor and more generally speaking the art of pierce damage on a great axe. This weapon is an absolute monster, especially in the setup that I'm going to show you. Now we can approach combat in various ways with my setup. First we have the good old option of just using wild strikes and brute forcing yourself through the fight. Wild Strikes is an amazing Asha 4, especially on this weapon. It works, your damage output will be bonkers and with my setup you have so much sustain, nothing is going to stop you while you're destroying whatever you're fighting. So if you want to become the helicopter you've always dreamed of and just use Wild Strikes and completely obliterate the fight like that, you can easily do so as you see. One more thing to note about Wild Strikes is that at any point during the cast you can follow it up with a normal or heavy attack and you'll get this special type of attack accordingly that will deal great damage and great poise damage. So definitely keep that in mind as well for those situations where you just want to combo your Wild Strikes into this special type of attack. It's a really nice attack for a bunch of different situations. The second option is to actually actively utilize the spear talisman and pierce damage. I said actively because with the wild strikes option you will also utilize this talisman but really without you knowing it and I will talk about that later on in this video. But for option number two, see if you normally hit your opponents you will still deal great damage with my setup. But if you make sure to hit your opponents while they're trying to hit you, so when you actively see them engaging in an attack animation and you hit them in that very same moment, you will get a bonus to your attack. Now for piercing attacks, there's already a natural bonus and this is due to the fact that when the enemy is in the process of attacking you, their pierce resistance stat goes down. So logically, when you use an attack that is specified as pierce damage, you will get a nice bonus if you hit them while they're trying to hit you. But it gets better, seeing as we just picked up the Spear Talisman. This talisman boosts this very specific interaction even more. This specific interaction is called a Trusting Weapon Counterattack Damage situation. 
So timer attacks correctly and you will get a massive bonus to your damage output as you see right here. It is about 50% extra damage just by hitting in the moments that your enemy is trying to hit you. It is also very fun to play around this very specific mechanic. So if you have beaten Elden Ring like 69 million times already and never tried this out then this might be your calling. With your attacks you will also deal great poise damage to your opponents to stance break them by the way. So accordingly you will get those juicy critical hits quite often as well and you know exactly how good those feel. It is orgasm inducing. You know what's juicy and feels good as well? You pressing that like button and the subscribe button right right now if you still haven't yet. You know you want to do it. You made it to this point in the video for a reason. Am I right or am I right? Now I'll talk about why this setup is also a stance breaking monster in a second. But first we need to pick up our second talisman and weapon. After killing Margot, you'll get a second talisman slot. And thankfully close by right in Stormville is our next big boy talisman. You'll want to grab the claw talisman right there. This talisman boosts your jump attacks with a whopping plus 15%. Now great axes have a great jump attack to them, especially when power sensing both in damage as well as in poise damage, so we definitely want to utilize those. We still have nothing in our offhand though. Even better would really be to pair up our rusted anchor with another great axe that has pierce damage, so we can fully profit from those juicy pierce damage bonuses that we would then get for both of our weapons. But wait, there is no other great axe with pierce damage in the game, unfortunately, so maybe we have to say goodbye to that idea, or do we? Listen carefully to what I'm going to say next. Go to the Limgrave Tunnels, it's very close to the starting area. Kill the miners there over and over and over and over and over. If you want to have the best farm for this, go to the second tunnel after dropping down the elevator and get into this area with 5 miners exactly. Kill these miners and then jump down to get a quick merciless death to respawn quickly. You will activate a state of America that way. With this you will have an extremely fast farm. Now you might ask why are we doing such a random thing all of a sudden? Well we want a pickaxe, yes a pickaxe, you heard that right. The moment you see one of these miners drop one for you is the moment that you can leave your house and go outside and scream out of happiness. Because now we're complete. The pickaxe is an absolute monster just like the rusted anchor. Both weapons have insane scaling and the pickaxe has pierce damage as well and is a great axe. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait what? It's not a bit it is it's not a great axe. What the hell are you talking about? Okay, the pickaxe is a great hammer, but for some reason it is actually treated like a great axe when you power stance it. So exactly when you combine it with another great axe like the rusted anchor. And nobody seems to know this secret as I've never really seen people use this, but you actually get the power stance great axe moveset. And guess what? Now we have weapons that do not look like great axes at all, but are actually considered great axes that deal pierce damage and have a great jump attack. Regarding the pickaxe, you can get it to plus 12 right away with the fact that we just got those bell bearings so we can buy the upgrades to plus 12. And if you're feeling funky, you can go and farm some more smithing stone number 5s and get the pickaxe to plus 15 as well. In the Limgrave tunnels there are a bunch of smithing stone number 1s by the way, so if you want to spare some runes, make sure to use those for the first few upgrades for both of your weapons. Now what is great about power sensing these weapons is that all those bonuses that I just talked about will apply to both of them. And the Great X Power Sense Jump Attack comes out very fast actually. And time your jump attacks correctly and you now have a third way to completely destroy the fight. All these bonus modifiers will make sure your damage output spirals out of control. As you see, the damage you can do is incredible. A lot of the time you don't even have to actively pay attention with either wild strikes or your jump attacks like I hinted at earlier in this video as they come out very fast and thus you can spam them. Because you are spamming your attacks, you will naturally also use them during parts of combat where your enemy is actively attacking as well, leading into you proccing that juicy trusting weapon counter attack damage bonus over and over. Now the nice thing with all of this is that you now have the power stance moveset and jump attacks with two very hard hitting weapons with great poise damage that function the same, but you also obviously still have the rusted anchor normal moveset and wild strikes. So you have an answer to any situation in combat really. And finally, one more thing I need to tell you is that you becoming a stance breaking monster means you will stance break your enemies quite often, surprise surprise. But I would actually recommend you to go for wild strikes when your enemy is stance broken instead of going for the critical hit. 
The reason for this is because Wild Strikes will in those situations usually lead into more damage overall. So definitely keep that in mind, but either option is good really. Now the final thing we cannot <laughs> forget about is the aesthetic of this build, because the aesthetic is amazing. Just power stancing this random rusty anchor and big axe looks so absurd, but it looks fantastic at the same time as well. With how so many different types of cool looking weapons got all of that shine in the course of the past year in Elden Ring, just having these Pretty mundane weapons perform so well and being fun has just something endearing about it. Now after getting two remembrances it is time to get your third talisman slot and for this talisman you'll want to get the winged sword insignia. Winged sword insignia can be found yet again very nearby as well, it is in the southern part of Lurnia. Go into the Stillwater Cave and progress towards the boss that is found there, it is going to be a very easy fight, poor guy doesn't know what hit him and you'll get that talisman. This talisman is incredible because with either wild strikes or just our power stance moveset we proc its final tier very quickly giving us that nice boost to our damage output which therefore will be like active 99% of the time in combat. And with this talisman in possession you have the trifecta of incredibly good talismans for this build that you want to run all the way till the post capital part of your playthrough really. Our flask is going to consist out of the earlier mentioned strength knot crystal tier and the second crystal tier is going to be the stone barb crystal tier. You get this crystal tier from killing the earth tree avatar in the northeastern part of Kaelid. It will give 30% extra poise damage to use, meaning we will stance break things even faster. It's incredibly useful, especially in this setup. The earlier you get this crystal tier, the better, because this crystal tier, in combination with the strength knot crystal tier, makes up for the flash you'll want to run for your entire playthrough. As you saw, we have a lot of different hits coming out quickly, whether it's through wild strikes, our moveset, or our power stance jump attacks, so all of that will benefit greatly from this crystal tier and make stance breaking your enemies easy peasy. Just decide for yourself when you feel ready to take on this tree because he's not that easy even though you can reach him right at the start of the game but now you know at least what you'll want to aim for for your flask of wonders physic. The earlier you get it, the better, but if you struggle early on, then you can also use the spiked crack tier as a temporarily viable replacement. This is also a useful crystal tier, obtainable in Limgrave and will boost your charged attacks. And then whenever you feel ready to take on this guy, you can swap it out with the stone barb crystal tier. As you already saw from me killing Margit, Godric, Renala, you can just completely destroy everything there is to destroy in this game with this setup. I just killed Radon with just the runes I got from killing Grail. No summons, no nothing, just pure strength brutality and it shows you that nothing can stop the captain whatsoever and it tells you everything you need to know it's a build that holds up all the way till the final boss which you will see in a second there are some slight adjustments you want to make for the mid to late game mostly because we get some extra options and that is going to be the next part of this video For the late game you want to swap out the winged sword insignia for the upgraded version that you can get later on. It's the exact same principle but with even higher bonuses to your damage output. So definitely get the rotten winged sword insignia as a replacement. Like I mentioned before, definitely keep the claw and spirit talisman in there. You want to use them for your entire playthrough. They are too good with this setup. Then talisman slot number 4, you can go either offensive with the shard of Alexander that boosts wild strikes or defensive with the dragon crest great shield talisman. I went with the latter because the damage output is already insane and with Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman we just have even more sustain, which is really nice. For the flask, like I said, it says exactly the same for your entire playthrough. Then for gear, the only mandatory piece is the headpiece, which gives you that beautiful pirate look. And for the rest, I used fitting gear like blade set and the exile gauntlets to get a nice aesthetic going that also breaks that 50 poise threshold so we can trade favorably as much as possible in combat otherwise the raptors black feathers for your chest piece is also amazing actually because it will boost our jump attacks even more and that will lead to even higher damage numbers it only doesn't have that much poise on it so you have to swap around the gear pieces and you can't unfortunately wear the hat anymore if you want to break through the 50 poise threshold in that case it is up to you what do you prefer more now for stats i beat the game on this build just on the lowest meta level which is level 125 the build is already very strong on lower levels purely because it's a pure strength build so you can efficiently already reach very high damage numbers early on especially if you start out as the hero for a level 125 build i recommend the following stats 
we will fill the soft cap on strength with our flask and we have amazing sustain because as you see we have a lot of vigor and endurance so we can get a lot of blows from our enemies at the same time while we're dishing out damage. And this build kinda promotes playing reckless and not fearing incoming hits as you want to get as many hits in as possible when the enemy is trying to attack you. In this case that sustain is just really nice because of that trusting weapon counter attack bonus damage that both our weapons have the opportunity of getting. With so much vigor and defensive aspects in our kit we will come out as the winner of those trades in a lot of situations and get those juicy counter attack bonus damage procs favorably and consistently. For higher levels I would just adjust it to your own needs like there's nothing really more you need than this what is shown on screen so everything higher is just going to be a bonus and up to preference. One more thing regarding the pickaxe, I would not care too much about its Ash of War early on in your playthrough because early game it's going to be complete domination for you with this insanely lethal combo of powerful weapons and playstyle. But as you progress through the game, you can pick up the Braggart's Roar Ash of War, which is tied to a certain questline. It will be an amazing pickup for this build. Since our pickaxe is in our offhand, we can actively use its Ash of War while using the Rusted Anchor, obviously. Unless we two-hand the pickaxe, of course. But we can use Braggart's Roar preemptively and it will give us bonuses to everything we desire. It gives us more sustain, more damage and better stamina recovery. Everything that fits exactly the idea of this build. And the best thing about this Ash of War is that it actually got buffed recently making it a nicer option than it has ever been so definitely make getting this Ash of War a mid game priority for yourself and with that my friends you now know everything about making and playing the captain build yourself as you saw from all the combat footage in this video the captain is an absolute monster and finally the captain has gotten his revenge the captain fears nothing promotes a reckless playstyle and embodies pure strength perfectly every battle you face will just be your personal playground as the captain with so many different options and ways to tackle every fight with this build there is never a situation where you feel like you have no solution to the problem no every problem you'll face in the game you will most definitely have a solution for with this build and it's a very unique build in many ways including the counter attack bonus damage mechanic that is quite unique that you can actively fish for or just passively proc all the time because the playstyle of the build allows for it so even if you complete this game like a thousand times already it might be a completely new experience for you it is a very fun playstyle and a very powerful build enjoy playing my captain build i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're still not subscribed hit the bell thing so you're the first to get notified when i upload something and let me know your thoughts in the comments